Hello everyone, welcome to another video on the channel and welcome to week 6 of GT Sport Daily Race Strategy Guide for 2021 and we are taking Super Formula cars around Suzuka Circuit in Japan So here is the settings for this one, we've got 11 laps to get round We have Tyrant at times 8, Fuel Consumption at times 2 and We have a grid start with a false start check which always makes things interesting And what seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment, we have the Racing Soft and the Racing Medium tyres So we will assume as always that those medium tyres will be mandatory at the very least so here's the flyover of the world famous Suzuka circuit in Japan Needs little or no introduction really in terms of circuits One of the most famous circuits in the world One of the most loved circuits in the world And unique in its layout and that it's actually a figure of 8 Too many famous corners to name We're now coming towards the end of the flyover Towards the fearsome 130R and then through the Casio Chicane of course the scene of the couple of Senna Prost incidents but first off, and as is probably going to be the way going forward in these strategy guides, we are going to cover the pit loss and the fuel. So the fuel, as is pretty much the case now with every daily race seed, they don't seem to want to be too keen on giving us anything to do with fuel. Fuel is going to be no issue. Now a little bit of a word of caution coming into the pit lane at Suzuka. It's very easy to understeer into that wall and have quite an embarrassing accident. Not quite as tricky an entry as last week's race at Bathurst. I've definitely seen quite a few people have a bit of a moment there. But definitely one to be aware of. Now you'll be in the pits for 5.2 seconds, pit time 8.8 .8 seconds and that amounts to around about 4.4 to 4.6 seconds of a loss in the pit lane or a loss on the racetrack to be more accurate. So quite a short pit loss, that of course is going to open up the strategy options. Let's move on to the strategy but let's start off of course with that grid start. You do want to be sort of getting off the line with traction control if you don't use it, it will definitely help the car accelerate off the, the grid start there. Obviously with the soft tyres you'll get a little bit more traction than the medium tyres. Uh, so yeah, whatever tyre you start on will give you a slight advantage or disadvantage. So that, uh, with it being a grid start, it's always going to make things very interesting into turn number one. But here we are then, we're going to sort of uh, get into the strategy now. This will be the first of the strategies we're going to look at. And it's going to be the one stop. So into Degna 1 and 2 for the first time, under the flyover for the first time, one of the parts of the circuit that makes uh, Suzuka so unique. And then into the hairpin here, a bit of an overtaking opportunity into the hairpin. And we come on to one of the longer sort of flyout sections of the circuit, up towards Spoon. Now of course the Super Formula cars do have the boost within the race. In terms of doing the strategy gauge, we, uh, strategy gauge, we do not use the boost just to keep the both front as accurate and as fair and equal as possible. Uh, but if you may be concerned that using the boost is going to sort of use up a little bit more fuel and give you something to worry about on the fuel, then don't worry about that. You will use a little bit more fuel with the uh, the boost, but it's only going to be five or six percent more compared to not using it. So uh, do not be afraid to use your boost. So this is the one stop strategy. Then we are going to start on the soft tires and then move on to the medium tires. Going to assume that of course the medium tires are mandatory. It is likely that both tires will be mandatory, therefore eliminating the no stop. I don't think the no stops a viable strategy, but we'll sort of touch on that just a little bit more towards the end of the video. So as we come into the Casio chicane here for the end of lap number 6, we're just going to zoom in on the tyres here just to give you an idea of how those tyres are going to be looking. So the front tyres are definitely doing the most work in this one, so do sort of maybe running your brake balance towards the rear. I was using zero, but I think maybe plus one or even plus two might even out that tyre wear just a little bit more. Now, lap 6, the tyres are starting to feel a little bit second hand, it's kind of weird to be perfectly honest with you, they don't feel too bad to drive on but you just see your lap times and your sectors are decreasing as you clearly just don't have that ultimate grip and traction anymore. But I wouldn't want to be doing any more than 6 laps to be perfectly honest with you, I can see the lap times starting to, uh, to increase quite dramatically by that point on these test runs. So we're now on the medium tyres here on this one stop run and to be perfectly honest with you, the medium tyres do not feel too bad at all. You can sort of break it exactly the same point, you just not quite get that ultimate grip. But the upshot is that I think they're maybe around about one second a lap slower than the soft tyres if they're in the same condition. So 
as that sort of tie wear kicks in, obviously the medium tires have just got a little bit more longevity, so as you get to lap 2, 3, 4 and 5, that kind of one second gap is going to get down a little bit. So I think the medium tires maybe surprise a few folk in just how competitive they are once you go on to them. That is the one stop run finished. That finishing time is going to pop up now. It's 18 minutes 30.855. That's the one stop's finishing time. Let's move on to the two stop strategy and see if this is going to be quicker. Now, looking at the settings, looking at the pit loss, looking at the cars and the tyre wear, I did initially think that the two stop strategy would be the better out of the two. But having completed the one stop strategy and sort of learning that the medium tyres were actually pretty decent to drive on and not that far off the soft tyres, I did realise that the sort of both strategies were going to come in pretty close. So we're on the two stop strategy now, we're starting on the soft tyres, we'll do two stints of five laps on the soft tyres and then just a single lap on the mediums at the end. So this is lap number five here, we've uh, pushed the tyres a little bit harder over the opening laps, we've actually dipped into the 39s there on lap number two, but I think we actually paid the price for that towards the end of this stint because whilst uh, we went to lap number six the one stop, the tyres here on lap number 5 are not feeling very good on this two stop strategy. So into the pits we're going to come, we're going to take on a new set of soft tyres, no fuel required obviously, we'll just get another look at this pit stop, so car is stationary 5.2 seconds, uh, 9.8 seconds uh, duration in the pits and you lose about 4.6 seconds on the road. So we're on to this second set of soft tyres now. Now this is quite interesting, we're going to see who gets track position. So obviously we're racing against the one stop strategy here, we've got the one stop up in the top right hand corner. You can see obviously we're a little bit ahead here because we've still got a pit stop to make, into 130R we come. So it doesn't look like the one stop is that far behind us as we come into the pit lane here out of the Casio chicane. It's going to be quite interesting as to who is going to actually get track position. So we're now putting on our medium tyres here for the single lap that we've got to run them. We can see the one stop in the top right hand corner coming over the start finish line there. Down towards the pit exit as the two stop exits onto the medium tyres and the two stop has actually kept track position. So we've managed to do enough on that second stint on the soft tyres to come in, make the gap, take on a new set of tyres and get back out in front of the one stop. So on paper it looks like the two stopper is the way to go in this one and as we come up towards the finish line we should just be about to jump towards the end of the run here on the two stop yep here we go out the Casio chicane we'll come across the finish line and we'll see how the finish time compares between the two of them so it was in 18 minutes 30.8 for the one stop and the two stop is clocking 18 minutes 29.3 so 1.5 seconds of a difference in the end and also managing to come out with that track position so that is both strategies completed let's move on take a look at all the data and we'll talk about the pros and cons of each of them and why i think both strategies are actually going to be very usable here so on paper the two stop strategy is the quicker out of the two by around about 1.5 seconds and I think for drivers that are a bit heavy on the tyre wear and maybe actually just the pad players the two stop strategy is going to be the favoured one. Uh, just I pretty good on tyre wear so I can tend to sort of make the tyres last a little bit longer than most drivers out there. Uh, so I kind of always have to take that into account now when I'm doing these strategy guides that maybe the sort of tyre life that I get is not what a lot of players out there will get. Uh, so I think if you're pretty bad on your tyres, then the two-stop strategy is probably the one you're going to be leaning towards. If you have to be good on your tyres, then the one-stop strategy comes a little bit more into play. Could be something you could just execute to try and do something a little bit different. Uh, but I think what we've got here is quite an interesting race, to be perfectly honest with you. I think both strategies have got their pros and cons. Uh, obviously with the Super Formula cars, we've got high downforce cars here that give off a lot of dirty air. It's very easy to see your strategy go down the, the swanee just by getting caught behind a slower driver or finding yourself doing the odd strategy compared to all the other drivers. So it will be, it's hard to really recommend what one, what strategy to pick here. As I said, I think both of them can work. Uh, and I think what's quite interesting is you can probably execute each of the strategies in varying different ways. So for example, I managed to make some rather 
interesting variations of the two stop strategy work at Bathurst last week. So rather than just doing four uh, laps on the softs and four laps in the soft and one laps in the medium, I actually did three laps in the softs, did the middle stint of four, and then did two laps in the mediums at the end to get the undercut. And I think this race and the way the tyres work on this one, the different strategies, just definitely there's options to do something similar like that in this race. So yeah, I've pretty much kind of uh, blabbled on for long enough here about the strategy. I find it very hard to recommend one over the other. I think it's just one of these ones where you're going to have to kind of, you know, have all the information in your head before the race starts. And hopefully I've managed to provide that there and uh, maybe go in with a bit of a fluid strategy more than anything else. But let's finish off the video with a lap around Suzuka in the Super Formula car. We're in the Honda variant here. We've got the 1995 Benetton livery on of Michael Schumacher and that's kind of apt as we come into turn number one because Michael Schumacher revolutionised the way that Formula 1 drivers take turn at number one and two and technically it turned, turned one and two into one big old turn. He was the first driver who used uh, went into the first part of turn one and two at Suzuka at full throttle and actually only broke for the second part of the corner. Into the S's we come now, it's all about just keeping that mid-corner speed at its maximum, getting the light, right line through and just carrying the most speed and poise and balance in the car. Into Degner number one, just down into fifth gear, down into third gear for Degner number two, very easy to run wide there. Up towards the hairpin, you're looking for the kerb on the right hand side, braking just as that kerb ends. Keeping it nice and tight in the hairpin, we didn't do a great job there, get the car nice and straight on the throttle. It's very easy to hit the throttle just a little bit too early there and squiggle the rear end and that will cost you time all the way up this full throttle section towards spin. Looking for a little path on the right as your braking point, full commitment as you throw into the first part of spin and then this uh, second part of spin slightly off camber there so wait till the car just gets over the crest of the hill before you hit the throttle and uh, that will take you all the way down to 130R which of course uh, full throttle, no uh, braking needed for this corner whatsoever. You could probably go through there at about 250 miles an hour with the downforce these cars have got. And then braking for the Castle Chicane just before the 100 metre board, use lots and lots of kerb, be very, very liberal with the kerbs. Easy to kind of uh, get the back end out of shape as you accelerate out the Castle Triangle. Again, it's a slightly weird corner, slightly off camber, and you're turning at the same time, so do caution. Uh, a little bit of caution there. I've ended up in the pit lane from there from getting on the throttle in the wrong way. Anyway, that is the end of the race strategy guide. Hopefully there's been some useful information in there uh, to get you started for this one. Uh, let me know how you get on in the races. Do hit that uh, like button or subscribe button if you haven't already. And I shall see you on the next one. Goodbye now.